Hello, my name is Satyavrata Samavedi. I'm a faculty member in chemical engineering at IIT Hyderabad. My research lab at IIT Hyderabad works in the broad domains of polymeric biomaterials and pharmaceutical soft matter. Uh, essentially, we're interested in understanding how processing of polymers affects their structure property relationships and then using this understanding to deploy polymeric biomaterials in pharmaceutical applications, uh, particularly the design of amorphous drug formulations, as well as designing controlled release drug carriers based on polymers, which can provide a uh, controlled release of small molecule drugs and biotherapeutics. And uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to be announcing a course on the NPTEL platform that I will be offering titled Polymeric Biomaterials, Structure, Properties, Function and Performance. And in this short introductory video, what we will do is to provide you with an overview of what this course is going to involve, the topics that we will cover as part of this course, the guiding philosophy behind the course, whether this course is right for you or not, and if you end up taking this course, what can you hope to learn? Now, most of you watching this video uh, would have heard of polymers and be familiar with polymers in some context or the other, because polymers are just ubiquitous. They're all around us, uh, right from within us in the form of proteins or polysaccharides. Essentially, these are long chain molecules to everyday objects around us, such as uh, polyethylene bags, PET bottles, polypropylene containers, polyurethane foam cushions. The list is just endless. Uh, if you just do a quick scan uh, of the rooms in your house, you will find likely that the wire casings uh, in your home are most likely polyethylene, which is a polymer. The non-stick coatings uh, that are used in your kitchenware are polymers. Um, the windows, glass windows, are most likely not glass in your home, but more likely plexiglass, which is a polymer. The wooden cabinets where you keep your books, that's made from a natural polymer cellulose. Uh, and even something as inconspicuous as the bristles in your toothbrush in the bathroom are a polymer nylon. Now, would you believe it if I told you that all these polymers that I've just listed so far are also biomedically and clinically important? Uh, that you are a bit intrigued to know how industrially important high performance materials uh, have been engineered, designed and used for uh, sensitive applications uh, in the biomedical industry. Indeed, uh, today polymers form the foundation and basis for a wide variety of applications uh, driving innovations in the healthcare domain. Now, polymers are used in a lot of different uh, diverse and versatile applications, including as liners and hip or uh, knee implants. Uh, polymers could be used as uh, coatings and drug eluting stems. Uh, they could be used uh, as dental composites in your fillings. Polymers could also be used as sutures in surgery. They could be used uh, as scaffolds for tissue engineering. They can be used as uh, drug carriers for control release applications or even as excipients in pharmaceutical formulations. Uh, they can be used uh, in the design of diagnostic platforms and microfluidic devices. The list is just endless. But what you will notice here is the broad canvas of properties that polymers can show just based on the applications I've just talked about. What is remarkable though is despite having such a large uh, versatility and diversity in properties, there is a common structure property function framework that guides the engineering design and use of polymers across all these applications. And the focus of this course is going to be uh, looking at that paradigm where we're going to primarily be looking at studying how structure affects properties and how processing affects structure property relationships and how all of these together jointly dictate the end use and performance of polymers in various ap biomedical applications. And we will do this with a special focus on two very unique aspects of polymers, namely hierarchy, both in structural organization, as well as multi-scale functionality. So the primary objective of this course is uh, to blend or to connect uh, fundamental concepts in polymer science and engineering with uh, real world uh, applications in the clinic and in biomedical engineering, essentially bridging theory with uh, practice. 
and uh, from a design or an engineering perspective we're also going to be interested in, in studying the properties of polymers and benchmarking them and asking questions such as if i have a specific application in mind and there is a particular functionality required can i backtrack and ask what kind of properties are required for that application and that functionality and in turn what kind of structure should the polymer have and in turn how is the polymer processed and designed so essentially looking at design principles that guide the use of polymeric biomaterials in many of these applications and we will be doing this uh, by looking at numerous examples of clinically important uh, polymers uh, biomedical polymers both synthetic and natural uh, examples of scaffolds hydrogels implant components and so on and all of this will be contextualized throughout the course uh, against the backdrop of uh, key applications such as drug delivery tissue engineering regenerative medicine diagnostics um as well as prosthetics i want to take a minute to talk to you about a couple of very exciting and interesting aspects that make that i think make this course unique the first one is uh, our particular focus on a conceptual or a physical understanding of uh, specially tricky or slippery ideas uh, so we will pay a lot of attention to detail in this course uh, to clarify some of these concepts for example uh, definitions Uh, you can talk about biocompatibility. That's a word that's commonly used uh, in everyday language, and you will see this in the literature as well. But does it really mean what we think it means? That's something that we're going to clarify in this course. Um, you can also ask to be uh, cleared by a, a federal agency such as the FDA. Uh, is that the same as being approved? So is FDA cleared the same as FDA approved? Um, and then you can also ask questions like, does FDA clear? or approve polymers or does it approve or clear polymers as part of a device in a specific application so these are all concepts that we will look at in quite some detail and clarify and this is also true for from the polymer uh, side of things we're also going to be looking at uh, words such as toughness and hardness from a performance perspective uh, these are words that we use in our everyday life but uh, in an engineering context they mean very specific things and we will focus quite a bit on understanding conceptually what those words mean um something as tricky as glass transition temperature for example right that's a physiologically very very important property for polymers that needs to be um accounted for when you design polymeric biomaterials and uh, from a thermodynamic perspective you can ask is this a true second order transition or uh, some textbooks will call it a pseudo second order transition what is pseudo about it so all these kinds of tricky slippery ideas uh that might be a bit blurry we will try and focus on uh, with special attention and clarify them to provide a good conceptual understanding the second aspect of this course uh, you will see throughout the lectures these orange boxes popping up on your screen and they will serve one of three purposes the first is uh, pause and recall value uh essentially all the lectures in this course are designed to be reasonably stand alone so you can walk into one lecture and get most concepts out of it if you have some understanding of polymers but if you are taking this course from the beginning uh, then we will build uh, into more advanced topics as we proceed through the course and as we do that we will refer back to uh, concepts that we have seen in earlier lectures and these pause and recall orange boxes are meant to connect the dots for you and help jog your memory the other uh, reason why we might use the orange boxes is uh, for pause and look up uh essentially we might have built a very strong foundation for certain concepts in the course but we may not have had a chance to look at some of the more advanced uh, more contemporary uh, aspects of those concepts so uh we will use this pause and look up uh, orange boxes to point you to some more reading outside of the class which you should be able to pick up on your own and uh, the last one uh, for which we will use the orange boxes is for pause and reflect Uh, these are some high points in the course particularly when we have um, structure property function relationships we will stop and uh, look at some quick examples or case studies uh, and uh, the idea here is to emphasize and uh, strengthen your conceptual understanding uh, through these pause and reflect boxes and uh, another very exciting personally for me one of the most fulfilling and exciting aspects in designing and uh, offering this course is uh, we are going to be looking at all of the science uh, but through the eyes of the scientists who contributed to this field uh, shown on your screen are some just examples of just some of the scientists whose uh, contributions we will look at 
but we will not just stop at looking at the scientific contributions. We will go a bit deeper into history and try and ask if we can learn something from their lives, uh, their passion for science, the difficult times through which they lived and yet not giving up uh, their pursuit of science. What was their approach to science? So can they learn some lessons from their lives and their approach to science apart from appreciating their uh, scientific contributions? Um, and uh, more formally, this course uh, is spread across 12 weeks and will consist of uh, 30 to 35 lectures. In week one, we will set the tone uh, by looking at basic definitions uh, that are required for the course, some historical perspectives uh, and how biomaterials are used as part of devices. Weeks two and three will uh, focus on structure property relationships, essentially fundamental concepts in polymer science. And uh, weeks four and five will then move to temperature and solvent effects, which are both important, not just from a polymer microstructure perspective, uh, but also to understand polymer processing uh, and also uh, because temperature and um, uh, solvent will both play a very important role in eventually dictating the performance of polymeric biomaterials under physiological conditions. And the, using the basis or the foundation that we have laid very strongly in the first five weeks, uh, weeks six and seven, we will now uh, look at specific examples of clinically important biomedical polymers, both synthetic and natural. We will also look at hydrogels. Uh, we will look at numerous examples of these to help strengthen the idea of the paradigm of structure property function relationships. Uh, weeks uh, eight and nine will look at the bulk. Uh, we will be looking at bulk mechanical properties, uh, mechanical testing, what properties are important for uh, specific physiological applications. We will also look at concepts related to viscoelasticity. Then week 10 will move to processing. And uh, here we will look at how processing again can affect structure property function relationships. We will also do some demonstrations uh, where our lab has some expertise in that area. Week 11 will uh, move on to surfaces and surface interactions between the biomaterial and the host, uh, starting off with proteins, purine adsorption, uh, and then biological interactions. And eventually in week 12, you will tie all the concepts we have seen in this course together by looking at uh, uh, biomaterial performance as part of translation. Uh, we will also look at some practical aspects related to regulatory affairs. Uh, this course is meant to be um, self-contained in that all the concepts you will need uh, will be provided as part of the lectures. But um, we have drawn inspiration from some particular reference textbooks uh, which are being shown on the screen right now. So depending on your orientation, depending on what your interest is, if you're interested in additional reading, uh, these will serve as good repositories for you to go look up uh, more details uh, beyond the scope of this course. And uh, while these five textbooks that I've uh, mentioned uh, are not exhaustive, they are meant to have broad scope in that some of them will have a more biomaterial focus, some of them will have a more polymer focus, some of them will have a more engineering focus. And depending on the flavor that you're interested in, you can look up some of these textbooks. So whether you're an undergraduate, master's or a doctoral researcher uh, who is exploring this domain or who's working actively uh, on this domain in research, or if you are uh, an industry practitioner uh, working in the chemical, polymer or uh, biomedical or pharma or healthcare or implant domains, or if you're just plain curious about how polymers drive innovations in healthcare, this course is designed for you. Uh, the only prerequisites that we will require are uh, some basic foundational college level first year courses in physics, math and chemistry that most of you would have done. Apart from that, we're not going to make any assumptions about your knowledge of polymers. We will start from scratch uh, in week one and build all the way up to week 12 uh, throughout this course. Uh, so um, I hope uh, you found this video exciting. And uh, if you want to learn more about uh, polymers and how they drive innovations in healthcare, please join me on this journey. I look forward to seeing uh, many of you in the course.